social-emotional learning is more important than ever right now. But you're probably wondering, how do I teach it? Or where do I fit it in? Today I want to share with you one of my favorite ways to teach SEL in the classroom. Picture books. But first, if you're new here, my name is Sarah and I show up on this channel every Sunday night with read aloud tips and book ideas that you can take back into your classroom that week. If that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button down below. Today, I wanna to share with you how powerful picture books can be when teaching SEL in your classroom. First, I wanna talk about what SEL is. We know that social emotional learning is so important for students, especially starting at a young age. Studies have shown that teaching SEL in the classroom improves students' social and emotional skills, as well as their attitudes, relationships, and even their academic performance. It will also lead to a decline in anxiety and behavioral problems among students. The collaboration for academic, social, and emotional learning breaks down SEL into five different competencies. Today, we're gonna to talk about just one of those and one of the skills underneath that. We are going to focus on self-awareness. And in this competency, students learn to understand their own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how they influence their daily behavior. So one of the skills underneath this is strengths and challenges. So we're gonna use one of my favorite books, Jabari Jumps, to talk about how we can teach this skill using just this one picture book. If you've never read this book before, Jabari is on his way to the pool with his father, and he has finished his swim lessons, passed his swim test, and he is ready to jump off the high dive. But first, he needs to think about what kind of dive he wants to do. And then maybe he needs to do some stretches, and we've come to realize that he's feeling a little nervous about getting up on this high dive. His father pulls him aside and reassures him that it's okay to be nervous about doing something for the first time. It's okay to be scared. And he gives him some tips for being brave and overcoming his fears. So when using this book to teach about strengths and challenges, I would start with activating your students' prior knowledge. What do they know about strengths or challenges? What is something that they are really good at? but what is something that's hard for them or they feel nervous about doing? By talking about these things first, we get students' brains thinking about what the book is going to be about and how they can connect it to their own lives. And then after that, we set the purpose for reading, that we're going to learn about a young boy named Jabari and what his big challenge is, that big challenge that he is going to face. As we go through the story, we ask lots of guiding questions to help students connect to the story. And I always love to print out the questions ahead of time on post-it notes so that they're right there in the book for me. You could also print out the discussion questions and talking points on a sheet of paper so that you can have it all in one place if that's easier. But I like to have them stuck right in the book on the post-it notes. And besides the questions, I also like to make the book interactive for students and engaging by having them act out certain parts of it or turning and talking with a partner that's sitting next to them about what they think is going to happen in the story or how they think the character is feeling. Sometimes they do a thumbs up or a thumbs down whether they agree with what's going on or what their thoughts are. Just a quick way to check in with your students and make sure they're really focused on the lesson. And then once we finish the story, we wrap it up with a discussion about what happened in the story and how the character behaved and reacted and how Jabari face the challenge and how they can be brave or overcome challenges when something is scary or makes them feel nervous. By seeing another character go through this situation will make it easier for students to deal with a similar challenge when they are faced with it in their own life. So I also like to do a few additional activities to help students really connect with the social emotional learning skill that we discussed while reading the book aloud. The first thing that I like to have students do is a quick written response. And the purpose of the written response is to help students make connection between the story the skill that was taught during the read aloud and their own lives. It gives me a quick check-in to see if they were really understanding what we were talking about during the read aloud part of the lesson. I also have them complete an activity sheet that again reinforces the skill that was discussed during the interactive read aloud and helps them to take it one more step further and apply that skill to their own lives. So for example, for Jabari Jumps, on this activity sheet, students are going to think about what they can say to themselves when they are facing a big challenge. 
how can they encourage themselves to be brave and overcome those fears? And students' favorite part is always doing the craft or the game that goes along with the interactive read aloud. So for Jabari Jump, students would create a trophy and on each side, they're going to list one of their strengths and they can come up with three different ones and then they get to color it in and glue the pieces together. And it's a really hands-on engaging way for them to process what we talked about while we were reading the book and again, apply the skill to their own lives. So that's a really fun way for students to understand the SEL skill. And the last extension activity that I like to do with students are to break out task cards. And these can be done multiple different ways. They can be talked about orally as either a whole group discussion or in smaller groups, or students could even work on them in partners. They could also be done individually where students read the task card and then respond in writing on a sheet of paper. And each task card provides a scenario or a thought-provoking question to help students apply the SEL skill to their own lives. So everything that I've shared in this video for Jabari Jumps, from the discussion questions to the task cards to the craft template, can all be downloaded for free. I will leave a link in the description box down below where you can grab the full interactive read aloud lesson for Jabari Jumps to get you started with using picture books to teach social emotional learning in your classroom because SEL is so important and picture books are a great way to connect with students and help them understand the different skills that they need throughout their entire lives. And this interactive read aloud can be used any time of the year. Once you download it, you just need to print it out and you're ready to go. You have the whole lesson planned out for you. And you don't even need to buy the book. I often get books from the library, check it out for the lesson and so easy to incorporate it into your daily classroom schedule. So let me know if you enjoyed this video and if you'd be interested in me sharing more interactive read aloud ideas to teach social emotional learning using picture books. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would be interested in. If this video was helpful for you, please give it a thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button down below because I will be back next week with more read aloud tips and book ideas that you can use in your classroom right away. Have a great week.